Another Wednesday night, and we are so glad that you're tuning in. Uh, we've had our first service, and uh, it went well, and so we hope you'll join us and, and uh, read your letter we sent you. Uh, the other thing is, I announced Sunday that we'll be voting on the budget this next Sunday, but because of some snags, it'll be the Sunday after that. So in two weeks, we'll vote on the budget. Now, to get down to the task at hand, I wanted us to look uh, tonight briefly, it'll be just briefly and very simply, at Jesus' encouragement for us to be in prayer. We've said all along through this uh, pandemic that prayer was one of the things that we needed to do the most. And uh, I don't know about you, but, but most of us are good about talking about prayer and thinking about prayer, and sometimes we fail to get around to actually praying. But Jesus encouraged us to pray, and he gave some just very basic reasons that we're going to look at tonight. And uh, I wanted to start in the book of Matthew, chapter 7. Uh, Jesus is talking, and, and so he says these words in Matthew 7, beginning with verse 7. He says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Who seeks, finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. And it's very simple that uh, these first few verses I read, you need to understand that there in the Greek it means keep on doing it. It means keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking, and you'll receive it, you'll find it, and it'll be opened. And uh, so those are some of Jesus' promises to us, but it's not based on us, and it's not that we just bug God so much that He's finally willing to see things our way and open it up. It it means that in that prayer time when we struggle when we work, because people say, "Oh, you're just praying." Let me talk to you. No, prayer is work. Prayer is a relationship. Prayer is something where we learn to. Uh, seek God. Uh, one commentator, I think was the most beautiful thing that, that I'd ever read, said that prayer is really the divine above us reaching down to the divine in us. Because prayer is based on our relationship with God through Jesus Christ. We're his children because of that. And because of that, he wants to hear from us. He wants to help us. He wants to answer us. And basically, we need to understand that I believe what Jesus is teaching in his encouragement to prayer in those, those few verses is that persistence in prayer is the key to spiritual victory. Persistence in prayer is the key to spiritual victory. He goes on. In verse 9, he says this, Or what man is there among you who, if a son asks for bread, will give him a stone? That's ridiculous. Good fathers, when they're asked, they're hungry children and give them a stone, even in Jesus' day, um, they'd give them bread because that's what they asked for. And some commentators went off the deep end and said, well, you need to understand the loaves are small and you can have a, a, a little stone that looked like that, you know, and it's sort of a play on words. No, it was very serious. It was ludicrous to think that any father worth his salt would give his son or his child a stone instead of the bread that they asked for. And so will our Heavenly Father. He goes on and he says in verse 10, if he asks for a fish, will you give him for a serpent? No, serpents are dangerous. And in that Sea of Galilee, they had small fish that were uh, long and sort of looked similar to a serpent when they moved through the, the thing. And they said, again, Jesus is giving us a comparison. No, he's using a hyperbole or, or that might not be the, quite the right word I'm looking for, but it means an exaggeration. Why in the world would you give uh, a snake to your son, something dangerous, when he asks you for a fish to eat with the bread he asked for? And the answer is, you wouldn't do that unless you were warped or psychotic or something of that nature. And so he's saying that, and then he, he makes his point in verse 11. If you, then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask Him? God is good all the time, and all the time He's good. Uh, James says it this way, everything that is good is from above. From the Father of lights, in whom there's no shadow or variable of turning. We, we would say, uh, if you want a big word, that God is immutable. He never changes. There's no darkness in Him. Uh, there's no evil in him. 
Uh, he is good all the time, and all the time he's good. He's holy, he's righteous, uh, he's loving, uh, he's merciful, and he wants to show us that. And so Jesus is teaching in this passage that persistence in prayer is the key uh, to spiritual victory. So if you're feeling like your prayers aren't, aren't answering, are you being persistent in your prayers? Are you praying according to God's will? Are you doing the things that need to be done? And so what are some of those things that we need to do in order to experience victory in prayer? The first thing is we need to remember First of all, that what we seek, God gives us more than that. And here's what I mean. Uh, the Father gives himself to us when we pray. It's a relationship. In Matthew 6, 6, uh, Jesus said this, But when you pray, go into your room. When you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in secret. And in that secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly in other words it's a relationship go and spend time we used to talk about prayer was the time when we communed with the father and and that word doesn't ring in our day because uh, you know <clears throat> we're isolated in this pandemic but even with all of our technology before this uh, got us through all the different avenues of social media this is the loneliest generation that america has ever known because they tend to isolate and they contact through social, uh, social, help me out, Galen, <laughs> social media, let's go, okay, and in that, there's a lack of personal contact, there's a lack of seeing people face to face, there's a lack of, uh, of that personal connection, now, um, Right now, that's safe for us because of the pandemic, but it's not a good thing even during the pandemic because we were made as social creatures to have a relationship with one another and a relationship of the same kind of God. When we say we commune with God, it means we spend time alone with Him. We talk to Him. We listen for what He'd say to us from His Word. We, we feel His Spirit moving because it says, Jesus said, you will know the truth because the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you. He also said, you'll know Him because... He'll reside in you. And we need to understand that. And, and spending time with God, being led by Him, being taught by Him, communing, which means a, sort of a face-to-face -face thing. Uh, no, you're not going to see Him face-to-face. -face, and I don't believe you're going to hear it audibly. Uh, you know, I haven't lost all my mind yet. But it does mean that you're going to hear from God. And one of the purposes of prayer is God gives us the greatest gift of all, Himself in prayer, his time in prayer, uh, his closeness in prayer. The Father who sees us in that secret place. In our day, it would be like this. You go into your room, you turn off all the TV, all the computers, all the phones, all the laptops, all the uh, tablets. You turn off everything, music and everything, and you're alone with God just to hear from him. And that is so foreign to the business, busyness we have in our lives. But we need to apply to it because it says, the Father who sees in secret will reward you open. In other words, you spent time with Him. You've expressed your concerns, your desires, uh, your want to be more like Christ, those things that would glorify Him. And He, because you've prayed these things in private, is going to reward you openly. People will see and say, that person looks different. It's sort of like Moses spending time with God on the mountain. He came back and his face was glowing. Well, they just had such a glow about them. And a lot of times we say that, and it's usually about a Christian person, it's because they've spent time alone with God. God gives himself to us when we pray. That's the greatest blessing. We learn him. We learn his ways. We learn how to listen to him. We understand what he would have us to do. We get purpose and direction for life. And isn't that what we're looking for? Is to invest our lives in a purpose beyond ourselves. To invest our lives in something that matters in eternity. To make a difference in our world. Not by our smarts or our looks or our talent. But make a real difference that has a lasting impact. We do that through working in the kingdom of God. And it starts... By understanding our God, we need to understand that <clears throat> we can find him. James uh, chapter 4 verse 8 uh, reminds us that it says this, Draw near to God 
and he will draw near to you. When we seek God, we'll find him. When we go to that private place, and, and my encouragement would be this, you need to have a set time that, that's above any other appointments. A set time that's the most important appointment of your day when you just spend time along with God. And we need to understand that. And we need to know that that, that appointment is not to be broken, it's not to be put off. Now, of course, there'll be emergencies that might come up when you have to attend to, but, but you meet God at the same time every day with your Bible, and you spend time alone with Him, and it's not just during emergencies, but it's every day, so that He prepares us for the emergencies, and so that we get used to how He works, and used to hearing the Holy Spirit's voice, uh, speaking to our hearts, speaking to our understanding, the impressions we get, and we find God. He isn't lost. He isn't off somewhere where we can't reach. We know Him and He loves us. Do we understand that? The Father gives Himself when we pray. That's Jesus' encouragement to prayer. The second encouragement is this. When we pray, God gives us forgiveness. In other words, God gives us forgiveness when we pray. When, when, when you're there with God and you're reading the Word and you're asking things, He will reveal things that maybe are not pleasing to Him or that are sins against Him. Because sin is always against God. Sin is whatever displeases God. And we find that in His Word. We find what those sins are and the things we're to avoid. We're to be different than the normal person that doesn't know God. He said, you should be holy because I am Father holy. Jesus said you should be perfect because your heavenly Father is perfect. We want to achieve that perfectness until he glorifies us in heaven. But that does not keep us from growing and striving towards that because perfect in this sense means useful, mature. God's perfect is perfect holiness. And he'll do that for us as he sanctifies us in this life and glorifies us in the next. There shouldn't be anything standing between us and God. When Jesus died, he forgave us of all our sins for all time. But that does not mean that when we sin and God reveals it to us, that he doesn't want us to confess and leave that sin to repent and turn away from that on a day-by-day -day basis so that we feel clean, so we don't carry that guilt, so that there's not something to keep us from hearing the Holy Spirit whisper in our ear for service and, and for direction and for guidance. He'll tell us to turn to the right hand or to the left. That's what the psalmist says. Do we understand that? So the encouragement is, first of all, he gives himself when he's pray. Secondly, we find forgiveness of sin when we ask God in prayer. The third thing is this. He gives us wisdom when we pray. Now, there's such a thing as earthly wisdom, and it's carnal, and it's, it's fleshly, and it's, it's demonic sometimes, and it, 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 it makes sense to man, but God said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, and my ways are not your ways, for my ways are higher than your ways, as the heaven is higher than the earth, and, and as the, my thoughts are higher like that than your thoughts are. We're guilty of stinking thinking, so we need God's kind of wisdom. And godly wisdom is peaceable, it's pure. Uh, it's all those things, but how do you get that? Well, James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6 tells us. If, you, <clears throat> if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally, in other words, bountifully, in abundance, and without reproach. In other words, he doesn't say, you just asked that for yesterday. You, 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 you come back for more? No, he never says that. And it will be given to him. But let him ask in faith without doubting, for who doubts is driven like a wave with the wind of the sea and tossed to and fro. And you won't receive what you ask for unless you ask in faith. But we're to ask, and we need to ask for God's kind of wisdom so that we'll be able to share with others, so we'll be able to guide our family, so that we'll be able to help our children or grandchildren or those uh, children that God brings into our lives here at the church or in your sphere of influence. So that when somebody asks you, this is my problem, what have I got to do? You don't just give them some glib answer off the top of your head, but, but God, through his word, guides you and says, have you ever thought about what God says about this situation? That happened in my life. Let me share you what he taught me. Now you say, oh, they'll turn off by God. When they come asking, they know you live a different life. When they come asking, you've influenced them. You've gained the right to be heard by living for Jesus. They will accept that. They may not do it, but you've got a right to speak into their life. But we need to speak with godly wisdom, not man's wisdom. 
Man's wisdom changes. Man's wisdom fails. Man's wisdom is, is limited. God's wisdom does none of those things. It never fails. It never changes. It's always right. God's wisdom never does fail. We need to give godly wisdom or ask. And that's something he gives us as we pray, as we spend time with him. It, it's sort of like if you've ever had a wise mentor. The more time you spend with them, the more it rubs off on you, it rubs off on me. And the more time we spend with God, the more like him we become because of his wisdom. The fourth thing is God gives us the Holy Spirit to help us when we pray. Again, in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verse 13, he, Jesus is talking about the same thing Matthew, if a son asked for this or for that, would you give him something else? But he ends it a little bit differently than just good gifts. He tells us specifically that good gift. If you then being evil in, in Luke eleven thirteen, 13, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Holy Spirit resides in us. The Holy Spirit helps us. Jesus says he was the teacher of all truth and he'd bring things to our memory. When we spend time in prayer with God, then the Holy Spirit, we give him freedom to move in our lives and to teach. The, the Holy Spirit in, in Romans 8, Paul says that, that sometimes we don't know how to pray. When we're in that pick on we don't know how to pray, he, he makes groans of intercession for us that the Father understands. We may not. Now, some want to say that's some kind of spiritual language. No, that's the Holy Spirit communing with the Father about our needs. Again, the divine above us, reaching to the divine within us to give us a helping hand. He also said in Romans 8 that Jesus is at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. So God in every way is trying to help us and he gives us the Holy Spirit to help us when we pray. In other words, we're over here. And we're praying. We're not getting where we don't know what we're supposed to be praying about. Or we just keep praying for something and nothing's happening. We're getting frustrated. But yet God's will is over here. And through this process, the Holy Spirit lines us up as we continue to pray in consistency and persistence to God's will. We don't change God. He changes us. He lines us up with what's best for our life and His love. But He does that through the Holy Spirit to guide us, to direct us. And we need to be doing what He wants done. And He gives us the Holy Spirit in prayer time to help us to do that. So that there's power in our prayer. So that we understand our prayers are answered. So that we have faith to believe that. And the Holy Spirit is helping us pray as we ought to pray. The final thing will be done. The Father gives us grace, mercy, and help when we pray. When we're praying, we find God's grace. We find God's mercy. We find God's help. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 14 through 16, we find this. Seeing then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. In other words, Jesus knows where we are, Jesus knows what we've been through. Jesus knows the pain and suffering that he experienced and what we have experienced. He's a man acquainted with griefs, a man of sorrows. Uh, he understands all of that, our pain, our suffering, our troubles, our anxieties. That's why the Bible says, cast your cares upon him because he cares for you. But do you understand that because of that, he says in verse 16 of Hebrews chapter 4, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He gives us grace. He gives us mercy. He gives us help when we pray because Jesus is interceding for us and he knows what we've been through. He knows how we feel. And we connect with him in prayer. And he gives us comfort. So what Paul says, I think it's in 2 Corinthians 1, when he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all comfort, the Father of all mercies, who comforts us in all of our distress, all of our tribulation. And he goes on and says that we might comfort others with the same comfort we have received. Again, we know God's mercies because we spend time with Him in His prayer. We know God's comfort because we see prayers work. We know God's comfort 
And when somebody else is hurting and crying, we listen to them, we empathize with them, we love them, and we can share with them the same comfort that God gave us through His Word, through somebody coming alongside of us, through a pat on the shoulder, through a prayer, through an encouraging card or call. Those things happen when we pray and God just puts us in those situations as we learn who He is when we pray because persistent prayer is the key to spiritual victory. So we need to ask ourselves, am I persistent in my prayers? Are there things I've given up on? Things, hopes, dreams for the future that I have not prayed? Have I prayed over my children for a hedge of protection? Have I asked God to give them large hearts that they'll obey Him and serve Him and know Him and be useful in His kingdom? Or my, my grandchildren? What about uh, my neighbor that needs to know Christ? Am I praying for them? What about uh, the condition of our country, the condition of our world? What about Christian suffering in other lands just for calling on the name of Christian? Do I care enough to pray and be persistent about those folks? The ones in our church have been attacked and are suffering from various diseases and, and, and the problems that they have. Am I persisting in my prayers? The ones we know are suffering, are we persistent? We need to be because that helps somebody else and us experience spiritual victory. Don't forget to pray this week, church, every day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your words. We thank you for the Bible, how it instructs us to pray. We thank you for your encouragement to pray. We thank you most of all that you care enough to hear our prayers and answer our prayers and guide us as we pray. So let our prayers be powerful. Let them bring down a revival. Father, hear us. We cry out to you for a change, not only in our land, but the world. Instead of against you, for you. Don't give up on us. Don't give up on those we know who need to know you. Let them be saved in Christ's name. Amen. Have a good evening. We'll see you next Wednesday.